Thomas Tuchel has verbally agreed a contract for the job worth between six and seven million pound a year, lovely, uh, which would make him the highest paid England manager ever alongside Fabio Capello. Now, former Tottenham and West Ham boss Harry Redknapp spoke uh, to Kate Borsay on Times Radio last night and wasn't happy with the news that Thomas Tuchel had been appointed as the new England manager. I am underwhelmed. Yeah, everyone gets checked. I want an Englishman to get the job. This is England. Can you imagine a, an Englishman getting a job as a German national team manager? I couldn't. So yeah, I am underwhelmed. I, I want to see. I want to see the job go to somebody, one of our lads. Who, this is England. We've got English players. We should have an English manager, in my opinion. Who would you have then? Well, I'd have gone for Eddie. Yeah, I would have pushed the boat out and got Eddie. But you know, if Eddie wasn't available, I. Do you know, I would say people that probably would be left field and people would maybe laugh at. I still think people like Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard could manage the England team. It ain't that difficult. We've got good players getting the best out of them. Mm, Harry, Red, Harry Redknapp there, we say. You can have yours, but given us a call. The number 03 717 Phil the Derby fan has done just that. Phil, a very good morning. Morning, Phil. Good morning, Alan. Morning, Dean. Phil, what'd you like to say? So, I am in the camp of Stuart Pearce. I think Parsley should have got the job personally. Um, I think you've had eight years of South going forward and trying to create this pathway for the young coaches and for the future and making the future for the England team look right. And in one fell swoop, the FA have just done away with it. I think it's, I'm not surprised by what the FA have done. Um, I'm just very disappointed by it. I can understand why they've gone for Tuchel as the serial winner kind of perspective, yeah. but it doesn't make sense for me at all, particularly with the new crop of, of players coming through the, the system and the new coaches as well, like Ben Fulcher. Phil, thank you. Phil, the Derby fan there. And to give us more a man who's been appointed in this role before, a warm welcome. Sam Allardyce joins us. Big Sam, morning. Morning, Sam. Good morning, lads. How are you? Uh, good. good, good, Sam. I think I'm, I think I know what side of the fence you're going to be on here. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you feel it should be an Englishman. There's no doubt about that, uh, uh, lads. I think that um, we've we've been at the FA particulars down uh, at St George's Park, been developing and breeding the way forward for English coaches and qualifying them for years and years and years now, right up to the the best qualification you can get. Um, on on top of that, to get a job, you have to get the pro license anyway, which many of us have, and many of us spent hours and hours and days and weeks and months and months to get a job, to get into the world of football, to try and get as far up the ladder as we possibly can. Now, uh, England uh, is is particularly the the best or one of the best jobs you can get. Even though I was only there a short term, still one of the best jobs you can get. You can't deny that if you're an Englishman. But the problem with the, the FA is that, as the last said, they've gone against all what they were doing in terms of building and developing their own from within. And, um, you know, for me, that could have been Lee Carsley. Uh, if not, we could have gone all out for Eddie Howe, as Harry said. Yeah, or even or even Frank Lampard and Steven Gerrard in the end, because you've got a quality squad. You've got communication levels with those lads who know what it takes to manage England. And, of course... The problem really being is the Premier League nullifies the development of English coaches or British coaches because it's so difficult to get in there now because the whole world wants to play and manage in the Premier League. So uh, it is a very, very difficult job, but it is very disappointing that we've we've gone down this road, this short-term look for a success route instead of uh, development uh, from, from Gareth onwards. Sam, obviously you started at the bottom and it took you years of success before yeah. before you eventually got the England job. Just before that, though, the five or six years before you got the job, when you kept getting overlooked, how did you feel when they kept appointing managers, especially foreign managers, instead of you? Oh, uh, well, I, ca I came very, really close before uh, Steve McLaren got it. It was me and Steve in the last interview Dean and uh, and uh, and I was obviously bitterly disappointed then, but I never thought the opportunity would arise again. To be perfectly honest with you, but if you are if you are doing okay when the next time round comes, then then you do have a chance. If you're doing okay, you have to be 
you have to be up there or thereabouts, I think, for anybody to consider you as the English national coach. And I think that's why I would have picked Teddy out and gone all out for it. If you're paying six or seven million a year and you're pay, giving that to, to Eddie Howe, uh, they never offered me that sort of money, by the way, I'll tell you that. But, you know, uh, I think that um, uh, the the way forward was was in blueprint when I started at England, when I started in St George's Park, everybody had to move there. Everybody and every coach had to be based there. Every project from every level of all the teams had to develop through that. And that was a really big move and a positive move by the FA at the time, which I was very, very, very welcome to come and turn St George's Park into the hub for English coaches or British coaches. Not that they don't have any foreign coaches, they do, or, or any other coaches that they actually do. But it was, a, it, was a, it was a good start, and that's like since 2016. So we've seen some really good coaches, but at the end of the day, coaches in the, in the lower leagues, uh, even British coaches in the lower leagues are becoming less and less because more and more owners are picking foreign managers. And that is the, the difficulty. The difficulty is that the Premier League, unfortunately, in our country, overrides the national team. Mm. Sam, the other big, the, the other story for me, which I, 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 I really feel strongly about this, the timing's all wrong, is Sir Alex at Manchester United saying he's no longer required. You know, I just, I think the timing's diabolical. Uh, I think, I think that uh, if this has been done, Alan, I think it would be would be amicable. I think between the pair, the, the pair of them, and and I think that uh, they've had a, had a discussion whether whether the, it's leaked out. Who knows? But whether, but that discussion has been had, and I think that they've both come to an agreement. I don't think it's. Where they just, you know, said to Sir Alex, "You, that's it. It's, it's done and dusted." I think Sir Alex probably thinks at the, this stage of his life that he's he's better off standing down. And of course, he still will be a big ambassador of Manchester United, no matter what. I mean, if you visit Man United, or or I'm lucky enough to go and visit Man United, uh, the um, the amount of things he does on a match day, you know, uh, is 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 incredible, and and still. Still, everybody wants a picture. Everybody wants to say hello. Everybody wants to stick, see him and meet him. So, he ha he has his office where he accommodates huge amounts of people on the on a match day. Sam, got just going back to the England team again. Uh, what do you think Tootle's got to do to get England from where they are, nearly there, to actually winning something? Uh. I think the ba the basis of looking at the England side at the moment is playing the ball forward a lot quicker uh, by getting through the lines quicker and moving the ball quicker. I think that the the huge amount of times where as we over override the fact of possession is fine, but possession without progression. I think has been a, a bit of a stumbling block for England. That every time they've come across a team that defends deep and defends with 11, I think that they struggle uh, to break that down. So when you get through, through the lines quicker and move the ball quicker, you're defending less and less against 11 behind the ball. And I think that would help. Uh, he'll, he'll obviously have, have a way of seeing how he can use the best quality of the team um, obviously, he's, he's got a good track record, but it does stick it stick in the throat. As I think one of the viewers said, you could never see an Englishman being the manager of a German national team, could you? No. So, you know, that, that's, that's something that does stick in the throat. But anyway, only time will tell. It's short-termism. That's what, that's what you, I'm talking about, short-term. Like, it's almost like they've panicked because they lost to Greece. In, in a non-competitive league, to be honest yeah. with the National League. And let's face it, you know what I mean? But, you know, it looks like they've panicked after Greece and gone, you know, who, who, can, who can we get now? Like, I mean, who, who's on the, who's, who yeah. on the cards? Who's not, who's not working? Who can, and that's really disappointing. I mean, such an important position to pick, even though he has got a good track record. And uh, I, I, so I suppose only time will tell. It, it, it's It's... Have they asked Harry Kane? Do you think they asked Harry 
what it was like because obviously he worked with Bayern Munich. I think that might have been a a, a factor where they, they said, that, you know, what is he like? Because obviously you have to do some real background stuff. How did the interview go? What was the interview like? Um, uh, that's an interesting scenario, you know. Yep, Sam. Great to talk again. Yeah, thank thanks, you Sam. very much, yeah, Sam. Allen, nice. Thank you. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.